Welcome back to Zero Style. I hope you're ready for another episode of Zero's Home Arcade because I finally got a package from Sabo's Arcade. This was very well packaged with tons of foam peanuts. And inside this box, we've got a brand new Killer Instinct replacement marquee in a custom blue colorway. Check out the lightning effects on this. I'm super excited to get this installed. It's got a plexiglass covering on the front so it doesn't get all scratched up, as well as this. But this is a really nice movesless bezel that we're going to install right in the machine without even taking it apart. So in my last video, which you can watch up here, we did a lot of mods to Killer Instinct to make it play better and be more optimized physically. In this video, we're going to do more aesthetic kind of modifications, minus the stool spin action that we're going to get going on in here, which was quite frustrating because I bought the wrong size screws, but I think we pulled it off anyhow. All right, let's start this mod out with some ASMR, shall we? about this mod is that it just clips right on. It's very tight, so start with one side and push it all the way over. Grab your other side here. Push it on. So cool with that custom blue. So here's the original marquee. And you'll notice when we add our Sabos one on here. Can you see the double lettering here? It's especially noticeable right here on the K logo. I'll try and zoom in and hopefully you can see it, but the old image actually does come through and doesn't exactly line up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the old one off the backing now that we know how beautiful this new one is. Our old decal. Alright, I got some isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to try and clean any kind of residue that might be left over here from the adhesive. Got ourselves a nice bright shiny light box. Let's install the new marquee. bezeled. This thing is completely sealed up so I have no choice but to use a knife to cut it. I'm so careful I don't scratch it. Big reveal. But you'll notice right here by the KI logo, see that screw hole in here? Right here where my thumb's touching it. There's one on the other side too. Right below the rare logo. So grab your crusty screwdriver, I mean trusty screwdriver, and screw one side of the monitor. Say goodbye to where you crack the plastic and this totally lopsided KI logo. Alright, so we're gonna drop our bezel in like so. Here, and screw up like so. I'm not going to completely tighten this both because I want to get it lined up right and I don't want to crack the screen again. And I haven't taken the film off yet, have I? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to pull this back. Get screw number two out.
perfect pull. Make sure this is beneath on this side here. Good on all angles. So I'm just gonna tighten that ever so slightly more. We are done. I'm so impressed by this bezel. The printing quality, the ease of installation, how beautiful the graphic is. I like this blue touch that we're adding to this machine, especially since my other one's going to be red colorway. Yeah, it would have been cool if maybe we had some like combo linkers or something, but there's only so much space for as many characters that are on here. But it's a very nice touch, and it's way, way better than the stock one that comes on this thing. Probably are expecting to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway. These Joe Sabo products are amazing. The quality is insane. The attention to detail, the installation process took me no time at all. They are great, but the lead time is ridiculous. It says eight to 10 weeks on the website. Fine, but I ordered this March 20th and it arrived July 20th. Now I understand business days and holidays and all that, but that's a long time to wait for your products. I think that the quality is there. I just think Joe needs to hire more employees maybe to keep up with the demand for his products. They are so worth it. But just, if you're going to order from him, know ahead of time, it's going to be quite a while before you get your gear. So, just so you know. I don't mean that as a dig in any way, it's just a fact, and I want to put it out there with this video too. So, you kind of have to ask yourself, do you want something right now, immediate gratification that's not going to be as good, or do you want real quality that's going to last? It's kind of up to you. Now, if you frequented the arcade back in the 90s, you were a big Killer Instinct fan, or just a Nintendo fanboy, you'll know or remember that the side of this cabinet used to have this really cool 3D Nintendo logo on it. It actually was part of the intro, and it was just really cool, and Nintendo kind of used that from then on for the N64. Available for your home in 1995, only on Nintendo Ultra 64. And it's missing from this reproduction cabinet because Nintendo has nothing to do with the license for this game. Rare completely owns it and it's a Microsoft property now. So we're gonna make this a little more authentic and add our own. I ordered these from Escape Pod online and they are not cut to shape. I'm just very carefully going around these edges, taking my time, doing my best job with these ridiculously sharp singers that I've had for a long time. Just go around and really take your time. Make sure you get your angles as good as possible. Snip off the extra along the way. Here's our logo. very much. So we're going to tape this in place. It's a little bit of magic tape. But the most important part of this step is measure like 20 times before you start. I cut it out but I measured both sides of the machine a bunch of times before I got this taped. And then once I finally had the logos taped in place, guess what? I measured it again. Really trying to learn my lesson and uh, remember my grandfather's advice. Just going along here on the edge, trying to make sure it's straight and good. Now we're just going to peel the adhesive backing off. And then starting from our center point, make sure everything's aligned right. Go right across your top edge. And then just continue on, making sure all the air bubbles get pushed out and you're done. Make sure all your edges are as good as they can be. Peel off our little bit of tape. Remove any little bit of adhesive that might be there. We've got our logos. Alright, up next we're gonna mod the stool. This thing is a static stool now, but we are going to add one of these spinny plates onto it. It's basically just a Two pieces of metal that has some bearings in it that allow this thing to spin around. I've also got a box of hardware to do this mod. So let's get to it. So step one, you gotta remove the existing screws from the bottom. Grab your Allen key, pull them all out. 
Then you're gonna replace them with new Fat Boy bolts in their place. All right, we've got bolts through the bottom of each of these four pegs here. Now we're gonna take our spinner and try our best to line them up. Now you're just gonna wrench these through the bottom as best as you can. And attach your nuts to the top of them to secure them. All right, so we've got our slider installed here. We've got bolts sticking out of the bottom because the ones I bought were too long and I couldn't push them all the way through because they were too tight. Did a test fit with one of the old bolts. Push them in through here like this because they're going to end up in the seat. Just give it a turn and make sure it clears all those other bolts. And I think we're good to go. Trying to line these up. Right here at the beginning, hand screw all four of them in. And once everything is lined up, tighten them down as best as you can. Now you got yourself a spinny stool. More arcade authentic. Well, that's the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. No one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, play some old retro video games, and have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one. I've got a whole series coming about modding this uh, Street Fighter machine into an MK2 Fantasy Arcade emulation console. So stay tuned. I'll see you later.